be uplifting to us, Lord, to be an encouragement, Lord, that it will be a light, Lord, into our walk with you. And we just ask, Lord, also that you put a blessing upon this offering, not only the gift, but the giver. We give all glory and honor and praise in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. While they're taking that up, bless the Lord. Let me say this as we, we, we get back to where we was talking before. I've got a blessed hope. How many in here have a blessed hope? Hallelujah to the Lamb. You see, in the world, uh, those that have no relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, look at me, especially if one of their loved ones die or what have you, they don't have a blessed hope beyond the grave. But you know what? Look at me. I've got a confidence. I've got a steadfast faith, hallelujah, to the Lamb. I can shout victory even in the midst of death. Hallelujah. Why? Because God's word tells me, bless the Lord, hallelujah, that when I die, I'm in the very presence of the Lord. The apostle Paul made this very statement. To be absent from the body, help me, is to be. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Now let me give you a word of encouragement. David under the old covenant had to pass through the valley of the shadow of death. Look at me. Christ had not yet been glorified. Understand something, folk. Hallelujah. Those in the old covenant, listen, they didn't ascend, but they descended into paradise. Paradise was in the, 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 the center of the earth at that time. That's why Jesus, when listen, when he died, it said that he didn't ascend first, but he descended, hallelujah, and led captive, or he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Look at me, paradise is empty now. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, bless God, they're in the very presence of God Almighty, look at me, you and I, under the new covenant, hallelujah to the Lamb, as Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We don't have to worry about going to paradise, hear me, that Satan held captive until the blood of Jesus Christ was shed. Hallelujah. But now that the blood is shed, look at me, hallelujah. When I take my last breath, my next one is in the presence of my Savior and my King. What a blessed hope that we have as blood-bought children of the living God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of God this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but look at me. I just feel blessed this morning. I said, I just feel blessed this morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm going to talk to you this morning in the, the arena of uh, being uh, blessed, breaking, and giving. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Blessed, breaking, and giving. We're talking about communion this morning, or taking communion this morning. But I want us to look at Matthew, if you would please. Matthew, the 26th verse. I'm sorry, 26th chapter. And the 26th verse, Matthew. <coughs> Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave it, gave it to the disciples and said, help me, take, eat, this is my body. Read with me, 27th verse. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say, help me, but I say unto you, I will not, not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew, with you in my Father's kingdom. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Can I tell you something? Jesus, hear me, he's not eating, or he's not drinking until 
the marriage supper of the Lamb, when all of us are in the presence of the King of kings and Lord of lords, till he, till he drinks it anew with you and with me. Hallelujah. And I believe that's going to be soon and very soon. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I want, us to, I want to minister to you this morning about blessing, about breaking, and about giving. Can you say that with me? Blessing, breaking, giving. One more time. Blessing, breaking, and giving. One more time. I want to get it in your spirit. Blessing, breaking, giving. Let's start with blessing. Everybody say blessing. <laughs> the greatest blessing that this world has ever received is when God sent His Son to mankind. Can you testify to that? Hallelujah. In John 3, 16 and 17, listen to what it says here. For God so loved the world, somebody say, Jesus loves me. Come on, say it like you mean it. Jesus loves me. One more time. Jesus loves me. You know what? I got this wristband on. You know what it says on this wristband? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. One of the, great, one of the greatest professors of, of biblical theology, one of the students asked him, what was the greatest revelation that you have ever received, hallelujah, from God Almighty and through the Word of God? And the, prof, uh, the professor's uh, reply was this, Jesus loves me, this I know, and sat down. And the students looked at him like, come on, there's got to be more to this than that. Surely you, there's a greater revelation. Can I tell you something? There is no greater revelation than that Jesus loves you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. And can I tell you something? Look at me in return. Hallelujah. I want you to say this with me. I love Jesus. One more time. I love Jesus. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, look at this, should not perish, but have everlasting life. How many have life and life more abundantly here this morning? You can truthfully say that. Bless the Lord. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Can I tell you something? This is still the great commission for the church. What is the great commission? Tell somebody about Jesus' love. That Jesus loves them. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Can I tell you, there's a, hurting, there's a hurting world out there that needs a message that God loves them. Aren't you thankful God loved you just the way that you were and that was no conditions attached to your, your salvation? But just grace and mercy lifted you up out of the mully grubs? Hear me, child of God, as you have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior and placed your feet on a rock to stay and written your name in the Lamb's book of life, hallelujah. What a blessed day it was, child of God, hallelujah, when Jesus, our God, clothed himself in frail humanity, hallelujah, and became the living word and dwelt among men. Stop and think of this a second. It seemed that every town that Christ stepped his foot into, look at me, people were blessed with healing, people were blessed with deliverance, People were blessed with salvation. I believe, look at me, that should go on in the house of God today. People ought to be blessed, hallelujah, to the Lamb, because of the presence of the anointing of God's Spirit in the house of God. Thousands upon thousands would go to the hillsides and listen, listen to me, listen to this Nazarene preacher preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop and think of this a second. In Luke 4, 32, it records, and they were astonished. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with, his word was with, his word was with, come on, say power. power. One more time. Power. Hallelujah. You know, it's not power. Well, that wouldn't scare an unused, a, a, a used demon. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. This is something that's got to come out of the heart, folk, with power. Do we believe the Word of God? 
Do we honestly believe the word of God? Do you believe the word of God is quick and powerful? I certainly believe that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Everybody say dunamis. He was a dynamite preacher. Stop and think of this a second. Verse 36 says, And they were all amazed. Everybody say amazed. They were spellbound. Hallelujah. And spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with, with authority and power he commandeth the unclean, unclean spirits, and they come out. Hallelujah. This man called Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, hallelujah, was the talk of the town of that time. If you would have been in Nazareth, if you'd been around that area, look at me, the talk of the town would be Jesus. His blessing literally touched hundreds and thousands, listen, of that day and of that age. Matter of fact, the Bible says that all of his miracles, they couldn't be recorded in this book. So we serve a miracle-working God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask a miracle today that you help me preach by putting a smile on your face. Would you do that? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. It's, more, it's easier to smile than to frown. Frown causes wrinkles. <laughs> Hallelujah. But His blessing, understand something, His blessings touch thousands of people of His day. Bless the Lord. The ten lepers, some of the things that I, I, I went over in my mind, the ten lepers, only one come back, listen, and give him thanksgiving. Hallelujah. They wanted healing, but only one come back to be made whole. Can I tell you something? You can get healed, but you can't be made whole. Boy, that's a good word. I've seen people healed, but were not made whole. Hell, hallelujah, this leper that come back to Jesus to give him thanksgivings, hallelujah, the Lord spoke to him and said, weren't there ten of you guys? He said, why is it that you're the only one that comes back to give me thanksgivings? He said, go thy way, show thyself to the priest, hallelujah, for thou art made whole. And that word whole means not only physical healing, but spiritual healing as well. Look at me, that one person out of ten, everybody say one out of ten, was made whole. In other words, he was saved right along with his healing. Can I tell you something? Look at me, understand something. Not everybody's going to go in the rapture of the church. If we'll take this one out of ten, that's pretty small pickings. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. One out of ten. You look at the, the ten virgins. Hear me. Five were wise, five were foolish. If we take that, listen as a, a statistic, understand something, look at me, only half the church is going to go in the rapture. Can I tell you something? You better know you're, you're that, that first half. And the way you know you're that first half, look at me. If Jesus has come into your heart and your life, you're going to come back and start glorifying him. You're going to go back and start praising him. Hallelujah. You just didn't come to get a blessing, honey. You come because you're in love with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And your name is written and recorded in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. I look at the woman with the issue of blood. Seems like everywhere Jesus went. He was touching people, or people was touching him. Why? Because he's the greatest gift that God gave to mankind. He's the greatest gift that God has given to you and me, and to this church, and to the world today. Hallelujah, the woman with the issue of blood, listen, spent all of her money on physicians, and couldn't get well. She was still bleeding. Hear me. But she said in her heart, if I could get best, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. My God, you talk about faith, that's faith. Hallelujah to the Lamb. What'd she do? She pressed her way in and grabbed a hold of his garment and instantly, listen, the flow of blood stopped. Oh, praise God. I don't know about you, but understand something, folk. Hallelujah. Jesus is a healer today. 
He's not only a savior, but he's a healer. He blesses me with life and he blesses me with health. Hallelujah. I can't help but think of the man, listen, that was lame at the pool of Bethesda. When an angel would come down, listen, a certain time of the year and trouble the water, and the first man in would get healed. And Jesus so happened to be at the pool at that time. And there was this lame man that had been brought there, or how he got there, crawled, whatever. I don't know uh, the transportation that he had, but the Bible says that he was there every time the water was troubled. But he could never receive his healing. <laughs> Have you ever thought in your mind, God, am I ever going to get healed of this thing? Am I ever going to get healed of this thing? It said for years this man was going to this pool. But little did he know when he got up that morning, hear me, hallelujah, he was going to come in contact with the Lord that healeth thee. Praise God. And you know what? He was standing by the man. The man didn't recognize Jesus, but he was standing there. And he looked at him. He said, you want to be healed? What a question. The guy's there to get healing, trying to get in. He said, yeah, I'm here, but I know, I, I'm always too late. I'm, I, 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 it seems like I just, you know, come up empty-handed. He says, do you want to be healed? You know what? Some people don't want to be healed because they get a lot of attention when they're sick. Some people don't want to get healed because they have to go to work. Man, I'm on com workman's comp. I've got back problems. I can't pick anything up. Jesus touches you. You better go to work. Hello. Understand something. Hallelujah. That's Jesus asking, man, do you want to be healed? You know what? People will give you money. People will bless you. People will feel sorry for you. But once that, that you're touched by the Lord Jesus Christ, understand something. Hallelujah. You're able to get up and work for a living now. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But he said, no, Lord. He said, every time I try to get in, somebody gets in before me. They're ahead of me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, to make a long story short, you know the story. Hallelujah. The man was healed. That day he was healed by the healer, Jesus Christ. What a blessing in that day. That man man never knew that that day was going to change his whole life and outlook, hear me, upon a man called Jesus Christ. Now you stop and think of this. Every person that he touched, listen, was made whole. Stop and think of this. I can't help but think of Lazarus, Martha and Mary's brother and a friend of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus tarries, listen, a long time and waits till Lazarus dies. Sometimes, listen, our dreams seem like they are diminished and it looks like they'll never resurrect again. But can I tell you something? If it's diminished, it means that something great and glorious is going to happen better than the first time. Now you stop and think of this, hallelujah. Jesus told uh, Martha, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Hallelujah, though a man be dead, if he believes in me, yet shall he live, believest thou this. He went to the grave and said, Lazarus, come forth. And can I tell you something? The dead man had to get up and walk out of that tomb in the name of the Lord. What a blessing. Can I tell you something? You couldn't even have a good funeral. When Jesus was around, there was a young lad. Listen, they was going to the graveyard. They was carrying him in a hearse. And Jesus comes along and touches the young lad. And the young lad gets up, wakes up, and jumps up. Hear me, child of God, alive and well. Would you think that that would astonish you if something like that would happen today? It's no wonder they were spellbound. That word astonished simply means spellbound of his power and his authority. They were was draw dropping. Hear me. What a blessing that even death had to obey the Son 
of the living God. I'm glad I'm serving a God of blessing. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. His blessing is still touching the hearts and lives of people today. How many in here can truthfully say, hallelujah, since Jesus has come into their life, what a blessing it's been. Let me see your hands. Turn to somebody and tell them, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, hallelujah. Oh, the joy, listen, oh, the rest, oh, the peace, hallelujah, that we experience since Jesus came into my heart. I don't know about you, but I've had people tell me years ago, look at me, you'll dwindle down after, after you get a little bit older in the Lord. Can I tell you something? Hallelujah. Don't you let some stagnated Christian pull you down into the mullet grubs. You stay on fire for God. There'll be a lot of them, listen to me, try to put a wet blanket on your fire. But folks, I want to tell you something. You don't have to dwindle down if the anointing of the Spirit of God touches your heart. There's still a joy. There's still a peace in your heart. There's still a song that you sing of joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb because Jesus has touched you. Hallelujah. How many know that when Christ come into your heart, great peace come into your life? Great love come into your life. Great joy came into your heart. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And you couldn't stop but talk about what Jesus the Christ has done for you. I once was an alcoholic, but I'm no more an alcoholic. I once was inbound by a sin, but now I'm no longer a sinner. Hallelujah. I've been saved by the grace and the mercy mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, to the Lamb forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. Thank God for the joy unspeakable and full of glory. I want us to look at a song, and listen in the hymnal, at 448. 448. Hallelujah. I used to be the song leader in Delphi's First Assembly, and I know these old songs like that, listen, like, like the back of my hand. Since Jesus came into my heart. Can you say that? Since Jesus came into my heart. Hallelujah. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought, help me, since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul, come on, help me, for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. I have ceased from my wanderings and going astray, help me, since Jesus came into my heart. And my sins, which were many, are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. Hallelujah. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure. My God, that makes me want to jump and shout. Why? Because that's in my spirit. Hallelujah, that's in every blood-bought, blood-voiced child of God's spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure since Jesus has come into my heart. And no dark clouds of doubt, now my pathway obscure since Jesus came into my heart. There's a light in the valley. I said there's a light in the valley. Come on, help me preach, folks. There's a light in the valley. Hallelujah, of death now for me, since Jesus come into my heart. And the gates of the city beyond I can see, since Jesus came into my heart. Hallelujah. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Do you know that? I know that. Hallelujah. Into my, since Jesus come into my heart. I am happy so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my life. Why has the joy dwindled? Why has the happiness dwindled? Why is the child of God so depressed and pushed down when Jesus Christ lives and dwells on the inside of you? Quit listening to the lying devil telling you, you've got to be depressed. You've got to put a frown on your face. You don't have no joy. Stand up and square your shoulders back and say, I'm a child of the king of God and I possess the kingdom in this earthen vessel in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Folk, I want to tell you something. You can listen to the devil and the devil can put you in the grave. 
Hear me. But I so refuse to listen to oppression and depression and listen to fear and listen to worry. I listen to what God's Word says. Hallelujah, there's light in the valley for me since Jesus come into my heart. I'm a blessed person. I stand under the blessed blood covenant, hallelujah, of the New Testament. And what belongs unto me, or what belongs unto Jesus, belongs unto me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Folk, too many Christians run around with frowns on their face and you'll never win anybody to the Lord. Nobody. Zero. Nowadays, listen, Jesus is not the number one thing on people's list, on their lips. You know why? Because he's dwindled out of the heart. The love has drifted by the wayside. Now when we come to, to church, all we can hear about is a high state. All we can hear about is the Philadelphia Eagles. My God, I come to church not to hear about the ball game. I come to church to get in contact with God. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Well, I wonder what the Lord's going to do today. I wonder what God's got. Is there expectation when we come to the house of God? Are we just going to go in and say, oh, I'm drum. You know, we're going to do our thing and then we're going out. No, we're not. I'm not listening to that lying devil. He stole too many services in this house, and I draw a line in the sand, and I say, no more. Amen. No more. No more. This is the habitation and not the visitation of God's presence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Understand me, folk. God is building a church and building a, a people of power that will move through this land that know their God, that are strong and will do exploits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me. I know hearts that used to be on flame with the fire of God. I get on, you, I get on, I get on the, the uh, what is it, Facebook once in a while. And I start looking at some of the conversations on Facebook. And you know what? There's very little chatter about Jesus. That hurts the heart. Understand me, folk. If Jesus is in the center of the heart, it's going to come out of the mouth. I said it's going to come out of the heart. I, I come out of the mouth. What's put into the heart will come out of the mouth. Folk, I don't know about you, but understand something. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is fixing to revive a backslidden church to be on fire and red hot for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Must arise and shine in this last day to turn this nation upside down and right side up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of God this morning. Hallelujah. We are a blessed people. Say it with me. We are a blessed people, and it was a costly price because we stand in the blessing of God, and we cannot, we cannot, listen, take this for granted. It was a costly thing. It cost the blood of Jesus Christ. It cost the body of our Savior. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And brothers and sisters, hear me. If the fire is still on the altar, hallelujah, there's not going to be much smoke going on. You know what's going to start coming? The warmth and the heat and the love and the joy unspeakable of the Holy Spirit that lives and abides on the inside of us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Closed up our camper for the last day. Uh, Saturday, but well, that night, Friday night, we had a big old bonfire, I mean, huge, and I just kept stacking the wood on and stacking the wood on and stacking the wood on, and it was cold Friday night, believe me, and when I, I threw a couple pieces of oak log on there, and pretty soon, you know, the smoke started flying, but after, it, after what was in it, it caught fire, and it started glowing with the, with, with, with the warmth of the other, other uh, embers that was in the fire. Can I tell you something? 
Hallelujah. It might only start with one person. But that one person sets another person, and that other person sets another person, and the next thing you know, we've got holy fire in Harvest Field Pentecostal Church of God in the name of the Lord, and there's nothing but illumination. There's nothing but the warmth and the joy of God Almighty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And can I tell you something? Where you've got fire, hear me, child of God, look at me, and if it's cold, you've got people coming around to get warmed up. I ask the question, has anybody come around your fire to get warmed up lately? Or have we been sitting around a gas grill trying to cook our weenies? Nobody sits around a gas grill and sticks a hot dog on the end of a, of a stick and tries to burn the hot dog or cook the hot dog. Hear me. But you put it over the fire. Somebody say, put it over the fire. You put it over the fire, and guess what happens? The hot dog gets cooked. And can I tell you something? God is fixing to put his people over the fire. Oh, yes! Hallelujah to the Lamb. I say, God, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it come into our hearts and into our lives. Let one of the greatest blessings that has ever hit Harvest Field Pentecostal Church of God. Lord, let it come this year in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise this morning in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. Since Jesus come into my heart, I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. All of this is what we call the blessing of the Lord God. I want us to look at something here in Mark, if you would please. Flip over to Mark. We've been doing a study in Mark, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. Mark 10. Mark 10. 46. Hallelujah. Now listen to what it says here. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and I understand Jesus is on his way to the cross here, went into Jerusalem, passes through Jericho with his disciples and great numbers of people, of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway or highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Help me, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. How many know the uh, son of David is a title for Jesus Christ? Which tells me that blind Bartimaeus believed in Jesus as being the son of the living God because he called him the son of David. Hallelujah. Where am I at? Lost my place. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Can I tell you something? Mercy is still falling to the sinner. But we've got to be like blind Bartimaeus. Hear me. We are spiritually, there are many that are spiritually blind and they need a spiritual eye opening. And somebody said amen. Hallelujah. And can I tell you something? Hallelujah. Blind Bartimaeus, look at me. Hallelujah. His heart was set to get in contact with the Lord, but people tried to silence him. Can I tell you something? Hallelujah. If Jesus is so real, and if Jesus is alive today in our hearts and in our lives, look at me, we can't but keep him quiet. We've got to noise it abroad in the name of the Lord. Hear me. I've got somebody as big as God living on the inside of me. Hallelujah. And I can't shut up. His mercy has rescued me. His mercy and His grace has touched my heart and opened up my eyes to where I can see that Jesus Christ is King of kings, 
Lord of Lords and Savior of all. Hallelujah. Going back to the song, since Jesus came into my heart. Praise the Lord. Blind Bartimaeus heard that Christ was passing by. Look at me. And the only thing he could do was cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the people said, shut up. Shut up. You know what? He couldn't look on them, but he didn't keep quiet. He wouldn't let the devil silence him. Can I tell you something? Don't let the devil silence your victory that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. My God, that's some good preaching, folk. Hear me. Hallelujah, because he would love to silence this church in her worship and in her praise. Listen to me, because we know that praise and worship plows the ground to plant the seed. And if the ground is crusted and hard, the seed will not fall into the ground and bring forth fruit some 60, 100 fold. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But they tried to silence him, but he cried out the more. Jesus! Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Did you ever cry that before you was ever saved? God brought me to a brink to listen to me to where I've done everything that I possibly do in the world and everything come up empty. Everything inside of me was empty. And the only thing I had was, Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. And can I tell you something? Hallelujah. When I cried out to him, it stopped him dead in his tracks. And can I tell you something? When blind Bartimaeus cried out, when the people tried to hush him, the Bible says that Jesus stopped. How many know that Faith always stops our master and his ear is open to the cry. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And this man wasn't going to let Jesus pass him by. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Praise the Lord. Jesus stops dead in his tracks and he says, go get him and bring him to me. Can I tell you something? Jesus is still calling people today if they'll listen to his voice. But you've got to cry out to the Lord. Hallelujah. If we want revival, look at me in our own personal lives. We have got to lay aside our agendas and cry out to God and say, God, I'll die if we don't have a move of you. That's how desperate we've got to get, folk. I'll die if we don't have a move of you. Hallelujah. Bartimaeus knew, listen, that this is, the, this is the, the only person that could do a miracle in his life. It was the only person that could bless him, listen, with divine eyesight in the name of Jesus. People go over and look at Bartimaeus and say, Be of good cheer. He calleth you. Can I tell you something? I stand here as a pastor of the church and say, Be of good cheer. He calls for you. Oh, my God. Be of good cheer. He's heard your cry. And he will answer. Hallelujah. And then you know what? The Bible says this. It said that Bartimaeus, you can read down through that. Flip that up on there if you would, Casey. You can read down through it. It says that Bartimaeus threw aside his outer garment. That's vitally important to notice. He threw aside his outer garment. At that time, look at me, beggars had a big, long garment that they put around them that when they sat down, listen, that that garment would flow all around them that when somebody would throw pennies or dimes or whatever they'd throw at him, it would land on that garment. And then that way, if he was blind, he couldn't see. He could just 
pull his garment up and get the coins that somebody put in there. That was the welfare system of that time. Hear me. And the Bible says that he threw aside his garment. You know why? Because he knew he wasn't going to use that thing again. Can I tell you something? When Jesus Christ comes into our heart and into our life, we throw aside the old carnal nature and behold, all things become new in the name of Jesus. Am I talking to anybody here this morning? All things become new. Praise the Lord. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Behold, old things have passed away. All things have become new. Hallelujah. And Jesus speaks to Bartimaeus and he asks him this question, what do you want me to do? And now the Lord knew that the man was blind. But why did he ask him, what do you want me to do for you? You see, what he was doing was trying to get this guy to engage his faith. Lord, that I might see. You know what the word of faith would say today? I'm not blind. I'm not blind. I'm not blind. If we just confess it over and over, before long, my eyes are going to be opened up. Because we are gods. Can I tell you something? Hallelujah. Jesus asked blind Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you, blind Bartimaeus? He said that I might see. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? Jesus opened his eyes. Immediately he began to see. What a miracle. When you was lost in sin and in darkness you were spiritually blind. But when Jesus come in and said, What do you want from me, Lord, that I might be saved? Forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. And Jesus come into our heart, look at me, and look at me, now I can see. Am I speaking to anybody here this morning? Hallelujah. And Jesus, when Christ come into your heart, look at me, you once was in darkness, now you're in light, now you can see spiritually. Hallelujah to the Lamb. My Lord, I never knew what the Bible was all about until my eyes was opened up. I never knew what relationship with Jesus was until my eyes were opened up. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You know what Jesus told the Laodicean church, the last day church? They said, we're rich. We're in need of nothing. And Jesus said, you need to buy some eyes, Sam, that your spiritual eyes will be open. You're wretched, miserable, poor, and blind. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Can I tell you something? We don't have to be wretched, miserable, poor, and blind. We don't have to fall in a root of a, a, a rut of, of apostasy. Hear me, child of God. Our lukewarmness, my God. It's a choice that we make. We make the choice, hallelujah, to be on top with God or to be on bottom with God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because listen, hallelujah, Satan has no hold on me. I'm blood bought, blood washed, hallelujah, to the Lamb. The blood has set the captives free. I've got the power of choice now. Whether to choose to do right or choose to do wrong. I choose to walk the path of blessing and not cursing. Deuteronomy says, if you obey the word, all these blessings will come on you. Read it in 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. Still holds true for the child of God today. But if you rebel, all these curses will come on you. Some things God has already spoken to us about that we need to get rid of, but you're, you're still clinging to it. Can I tell you something? That thing's a curse to you. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but it's a curse to you, and you need to get rid of it. I said you need to get rid of it. Hear me, child of God, because that thing is holding back the blessing of God in your life. And understand me, hallelujah to the Lamb. 
When that thing is gone, look at me, the blessing of the Lord will overtake and overshadow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody would say, well, who's he talking about? You don't need to know. But God knows. Hear me. God knows. Bless the Lord. But if you look into the book of Luke, we're getting back to this story of blind Bartimaeus. When you get, look into the book of Luke, when Luke records, it says that after the Lord opened up the eyes of blind Bartimaeus, it said all those that were saying, shut your trap. It said they started rejoicing along with him as they was going to the temple. They got blessed over somebody else's blessing. <laughs> Don't you get blessed when you see somebody come to the altar and give Jesus their heart and life? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Don't you get excited to see somebody say, Oh God, forgive me of my sins and see the tears run down their cheeks and know that it's joy unspeakable coming into their hearts. And the Bible instantly says that blind Barnabas begin to glorify God and begin to praise Him. Ought not there be a praise and a shout in the house of God for what God has done for us today as He has blessed us going in and blessed us going out. He's made us the head and not the tail. He's put us above and not beneath. You believe this, church? Oh, praise the Lord forevermore. Yes, hear me. I am blessed, I am blessed. Every day of my life, I'm blessed. And the reason why I'm blessed and the reason why you're blessed is because Jesus is resident in your heart. You've made him the Lord and the Savior and the King of your life. Hear me. Bless the Lord. He's become my song and my dance and my entertainment. He's become the lily of my valley. Hear me, child of God. Bless the Lord. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he becomes my, my, my exceeding great shield and reward. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. How many's mad at me this morning? I'm talking to you about the blessing of the Lord, and some of them is mad. How do you know? Because I can tell by the expressions on your face. You're mad because I've blessed you. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. And maybe I hit an idol someplace. When you hit an idol, look at me. People get mad. But look at me. I'm glad. Because Jesus can make you happy. And Jesus wants to pull down the idols and put up the King of kings and the Lord of lords on our hearts and lives. We're talking about the blessings of the Lord that makes rich. If we can't get happy over the blessings, I don't know if I want to talk to you about the breaking. <laughs> Hear me. People desire the blessing, but they don't want the breaking. But understand something. The breaking comes along with the blessing. You got the blessing, you got the breaking, and that you, you got the giving. And every one of us will find, listen, will find ourselves in that very thing. Christ went through the very, very things that we're talking about. The blessing, the breaking, and the giving of himself. Say it with me. Blessing, breaking, and giving. One more time. Blessing, breaking, and giving. Well, we ain't going to have time to get into the breaking and the giving. You're going to have to come back tonight. Amen. Oh, I don't want to be broke. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll drive 50 miles to go to a restaurant and get eat, to, to eat something. They ain't going to come to church. Uh -uh. You need broke. I said you need broke. You see, I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm not here just tickle ears. 
All of us need broke. Broken before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want the blessing. I want the breaking. And I want to give in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? If all you are doing is living off the blessing of God, you are a spoiled brat. Woo! How can you be so straightforward? Because we need to have some straightforward preaching. You look at a kid that's got everything to give to him. And I'll get and tell you, they are nothing but brats. No, they're my little angels, but they're the neighbor's brats. <laughs> Hello. No, they're brats because they got everything to give to them. Nothing, listen, they had to work for. No responsibility. Dad, I want an iPod. Dad, I want a four-wheeler. Dad, I want mom. I want this. I want that. And guess what? They run right out and get it even though they can't afford it. Hear me. And they get everything for nothing. Boy, somebody say amen. amen. And you know what? That's what's happening in the United States of America today. We're bringing up a generation that's going to look to the government and say, we want, we want, we want, but we don't want to work. Oh, what a good word, folk. And it's happening right now. We want, we want, we want, we want. But we don't want to give nothing. We just want it given to us. Understand something, folk. My Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How we need, listen, child of God, to be responsible for the things, listen, that, we, that, that the Lord wants to give to us. Amen. Praise God. And not just hoard them to ourselves. God blesses me so that I can bless somebody else. God blesses you so that you can bless somebody else. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. You're a blessing. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Bible says the God of all comfort comforts us with the comfort wherewith we are comforted with, so that we might comfort one another with the same comfort that God gives us. Does that make sense? In other words, if God has blessed you and comforted you, He wants you to be His extended hand and arm and mouth to comfort somebody else. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is, folk. Praise God forevermore and evermore. I cannot just live off the blessing of the Lord. Hear me. I need to be grounded and I need to be rooted because when the storms of life come, look at me, the blessing is not going to rescue you. It's the Savior and the Word that's going to rescue you. Thank God for the blessing. Thank God I am blessed above and beyond. But I also need to be broken with that blessing in Jesus' name. And somebody said, amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I was in Walmart the other day talking about brats and kids. And there was a woman with a, I don't know, he's probably a three-year-old or four-year-old running in the cart with her, and he wanted a toy over in the toy department. But it, I was clear back by the automotive department, and she was over towards the, the toy department, and I could hear this kid screaming and carrying on clear through the whole store, just hollering and screaming at his mother. I want blah, blah, blah. And he wanted a toy. And he was literally throwing a royal fit while that woman was pushing him in a cart. And he was hollering and screaming at the mom. So the mom went back to the toy department. And I, and, and I, was, I, was, I was wondering what in the world was going on. So I went around to look, see what's happening, where all this noise is going. 
And here this little kid is jumping up and down in his car and listen, hollering at his mom to get him this toy. Can I tell you something? That kid was a brat. I could just tell by the way he was responding to his mother. And the mom picked the toy up, put it in the basket, and look at me, it solved little Johnny's problem, and he had a big smile on his face. I got blessed from mommy. But you know what? Every time she goes in the store and she, he sees a toy he wants, guess what? He's figured out how to manipulate mom. All I've got to do is throw a fit. And if I throw a fit, I can get the blessing. Am I right? If I throw a fit, I can get the blessing. Hear me, folk. You see it over and over again. And can I tell you something? That happens spiritually. It goes on spiritually in, in Christians' lives. Hear me. I don't know about you, but I want to be anchored steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the faith of the living God. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. She was, he was jumping up and down, throwing a royal fit, and I thought to myself, there's just something rose up on the inside of me. And I thought, I'd like to have that kid for about five minutes. I'd take that out of him real quick. My kids knew that, listen, that if they throw to fit, whether it be in church or wherever it was, when they got home, look at me, they meant with Mr. Le Leather. And Dad meant it. When we get home, you're, you're in trouble. And they was raised like that all the way up to their adulthood. And there's times, listen to me, when we was in the little church over there, when they would act up in the little church, I didn't have to say a thing. All I had to do was go like this. And they knew they was in trouble. We didn't have no nursery back then. The kids stayed with the parents. I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, can't get no applause out of that. I'm serious, you know why? Because we separate the family and cause division in the family in the church. The Lord's really been dealing with my heart in some of these things, hear me. The youth department, we got a youth in there, separate, they got a separate service than what we've got. I think all of us need to be the same. Just a thought, just saying, don't get mad at me. <laughs> but we, I think we do our kids an injustice when we separate them apart. Listen from the family. Some would say, well, they just don't understand your preaching. Can I tell you something? If you can't understand my preaching, you're not going to understand anybody's preaching. Look at me. Folk, I thought to myself when that kid was doing that, how in the world can that parent allow that child to manipulate and control them that way? I realize now that there's laws that state that you can't punish your children. You've got to put their nose in a wall and take some things away from them. That's their punishment. Well, that might work on some, but others, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't work on me, I know that. <laughs> when I was in school, they used to do that to us when we'd act up, that draw a circle on the board. Anybody, and I talked to anybody on here, and we had to put our feet up against the wall and put our nose in that circle for the all class time. And we just sat there and just smirk and carry on. Didn't bother us a bit. But when I tell you, when they took out Big Bertha, <laughs> our ears perked up real quick. Amen. Big Bertha was a ball bat. Yep. Shaved down with holes in it. And I want to tell you something. If you was out of line, some of the teachers, they knew how to use it too. 
And can I tell you something? I don't care if you're the bully of the school. You come under subjection to that teacher because you didn't want Big Bertha across the back of you. Amen. Hear me. Folk, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction driveth it far from him in the name of the Lord. Now, I realize that some kids are, are, are abused. You see this on television television, you see it, you know, uh, with the different parents because the parents are, something's wrong with them mentally. But understand something, if you're a child of God, look at me, God is going to spank you just like you spank your children. That's called the breaking. I want to be a brat! <laughs> I don't want no spanking! But you start being a brat spiritually, and if you're connected with the Lord, the Lord will take you to the woodshed, and he will give you a spanking. And you'll never forget it. But can I tell you something? It might not seem pleasant at the time, but in the end, it will bring about the peaceable results of righteousness, purity, and holiness in the name of the Lord. Has anybody in here said this? Their parents said this to them. I'm talking to the older generation. And this is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me. <laughs> I said, come on, man, you're getting pleasure out of this. <laughs> you think of that. You're getting pleasure out of this. But you know what? I can look at my own self and I can look at my mom and, and my dad and, and some of the things that, that I would do to, to, to needle my mom. And she would get so aggravated at me hear me. I was a pest. But you know what? I couldn't get away with that with my dad. If I tried to run from him, he'd say, you know what? The harder you run, the harder it's going to be. You better stop. And understand something, folk. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If we're not chastened by the Lord, can I put it in biblical terms what God calls you? Can I put it in biblical terms? You're a bastard. That's what the Bible says. You're a bastard. You're not a child of God. So can I tell you, if you've been spanked for, from God, you need to throw up your hands and say, Thank you, Lord, hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore, because you know you're a blood-bought child of the living God, and God will chasten us, hallelujah, because we are sons. Woo! It's part of the breaking. Now, we ain't got into the scripture yet, but we ain't got time to go into that. But it's going to, you know, we're going to speak about that tonight. And I realize that some of you is going to be, you know, live far away and you can't make it back. But if you can make it back, come back Sunday night. Bless the Lord. You'll be blessed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And if you can't get a DVD or CD, bless the Lord and listen to the rest of this message because it will bless you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. How many in here can truly say thank God for the blessing and thank God for the chastening? Because if it wouldn't be for the chastening, look at me, you'd be running wild. And you know what? Look at me. I'm a preacher that still believes that you can lose your salvation. I'm a preacher that still believes, hear me, child of God, hallelujah, you can step out of the circle of God and split hell wide open. I believe we can be secure as long as we stay with Jesus. As long as I stay in Jesus, look at me, I'm secure in my spirit. But understand something. God created me with a free will, and he created you with a free will, and I can step out of Jesus anytime I want to step out of Jesus. Hear me. And folk, if I choose to step out away from the Lord, look at me, there is no other sacrifice or redemption for sin but only Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I'm blessed. Say it one more time. Neighbor, I'm blessed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God I am blessed. Amber, come back if you would, please. Bless the Lord. Musicians, if you would. Hallelujah.
I am blessed, I am blessed every day of my life. I am blessed. Can we sing that to the Lord? Because truthfully, we are a blessed people. And understand, we're not talking against the blessing of the Lord because God loves to give his children good gifts. Amen? He loves to give us good gifts, praise the Lord, but I'm not serving him because he blesses me. Hear me. I'm serving him because I love him. Praise the Lord. Some Christians will never get anchored in the Lord. They'll jump from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting. They'll never stay anchored in a church. They'll jump from one church, next church, next church, all different types of doctrines and never anchored and steadfast. God wants to get us steadfast and anchored and unmovable. Why? Because we know the storms of life will come upon each and every one of us. And can I tell you something? I don't want to crumble in the storm. But I want to stand treetop tall and still maintain the joy unspeakable and full of glory because Christ dwells on the inside of me. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you to stand your feet so we keep awake. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want us to sing this song. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day of my life, I am blessed. Let's sing it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I am blessed, I am blessed, every day of my life I am blessed, when I wake up in the morning till I lay my head at rest, I am You can be seated for a few minutes as we go into communion service. Praise the Lord. As Amber just keeps playing that, bless the Lord. What a blessing it is, listen, to even take of communion in remembrance of the one who has blessed us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Never forget where you come from and where you're at today. Never forget where you come from and where you're going in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because of the blessing of the cross of Christ in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask those in the back, if you would please just make your way forward. Bless the Lord to take of communion. Praise the Lord. And wait till everybody receives and then we take together.
ваше брат. the Lord. We just read uh, in, in uh, what was it, Matthew, about Jesus, that he sat down just before he went to the cross with his disciples and took bread and break it and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. I start part of the breaking process of some of the th things that the Lord Jesus Christ went through. He said, this do in remembrance of me. It wasn't an easy thing, and battle in the flesh is not an easy thing. Hear me. You've got to have more than willpower. You've got to have his power working in you to mortify the deeds of the flesh. But Jesus accomplished, hallelujah, everything on the cross. But we stop and we meditate upon the broken body. He didn't do it for himself. He done it for you and for me in his precious name. Father, I thank you and I praise you for the broken body of Jesus. That God will never forget what you have done for us. And as we partake of this emblem, Lord, we ask that you bless it to our spirits, souls, and bodies. In Jesus' name, shall we partake together. After the same manner, he took the cup. And he said, drink it all. Everybody say all. Every bit of it. We've got to eat all the blood, or the, all the bread, and all the blood. Drink all the blood. Not just a part, but all of it. Hallelujah. This is the covenant that's been purchased for you and for me. That all the promises of God are yea and amen. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you once again for the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, that washes our sin clean and our slate clean. I thank you, God, as we stand this morning and say, Father, there's still power in the blood of Jesus. And as we partake of this, Father, we thank you Hallelujah for the power that flows in our bodies today. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we take together?
There's power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Let's sing that. Stand to your feet if you would, please. Praise the Lord. There is power, power, a wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, a wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power. head bowed, every eye closed. There's still power in the blood of the Lamb. You might be in here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Can I tell you something? He wants to open up the blinded eyes spiritually so that we might see. He wants to be a blessing unto you this morning in the name of the Lord. And if you're here listening, you don't have that relationship with Him, but you desire that. I want you to just lift up your hand if you're here. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many in here can truthfully say, thank God I've got relationship with the Lord. Lift up your hand. Would you do that? Praise the Lord. And you're thankful for it in Jesus' name. Father, what a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul I thank you Lord for making me whole thank you Lord for giving to me thank you, thank you, thank you from the depths of our heart. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Father, that your word lodges deep within our hearts that would not allow the fowls of the air to steal away what we have heard this morning. Thank you, God, that your word blesses us, your word encourages us, your word inspires us, and your word corrects us. And we thank you and we praise you for that, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak blessings upon our brothers and sisters, God, as we go our separate ways in the name of the Lord. And Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your blessing in tonight's service as well. In Jesus' name, and everybody in the house said, Amen and Amen. Praise